And uh, co-hosted today by New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. John Hager. Good morning, sir. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matthew Harvey. Good morning. Also, West Virginia First Foundation board member. But board, what do you, are, you, are you the board chair? Chair, is that the deal? Uh, that's right. You're like a big kahuna with that stuff, right? I wouldn't say big kahuna, but I am certainly dedicated to what I think is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to bring generational change to West Virginia. I know you take that seriously. I absolutely do. And they released some money recently. I think I saw Metro News, $19 million. $19.2 million for, um, that the regions or nonprofits and government entities around the state can apply for to take advantage, um, to spend towards abatement. And do those applications go through the foundation? Absolutely. So you guys Absolutely. are involved in deciding who gets and who gets how much? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a foundation. It's a private foundation that's set yeah. up to receive 72.5% of the proceeds from the opioid uh, lawsuit settlements. And it oper- it's going to be a, just a regular private uh, foundation with the goal and the purpose that's stated in MOU to, and I, I use this very general, abatement, mm-hmm. abatement of the, um, you know. And that's very interpretive. It's, it is because I want to be as umbrella as possible because there's a lot of issues R- right now. You know, opioids, uh, prescription drugs are, you know, still a problem in West Virginia, but they're not the only problem. And, you know, absolutely this money will be used to combat fentanyl, which is really the lethality is makes it just the most dangerous thing that we're dealing with right now. Can city and county governments apply for these grants? Absolutely. Speaking of city governments, City Councilman Jason Baker is here in studio with us. Jason, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Great, thank you. I know uh, Kevin Knowles, who's the mayor of the city and has done a great deal of work with recovery in our community, uh, has uh, a lot of experience in this field. Is the city applying for some of this money and grants? Jason, do you know? Are they actively involved? Yeah, I think we were actively uh, on, on a few of them. But I think we were using it through um, Mountaineer. Mountaineer Recovery Center. Yeah. Understood. Okay. Uh, Jason, the city of Martinsburg has gotten a lot of bad publicity lately because of so many different shootings. And I guess in talking to the chief, Aaron Gibbons, there's nothing that ties these together. It's not an organized effort. It's sort of random stuff that's been taking place. Do you get a vibe right now from the residents that they feel unsafe in the city, or are they looking at this as it's just kind of random weird stuff that happened? I don't know that anybody feels necessarily unsafe um, one way or the other. Uh, yes, we've had a f- an uptick in shootings or violent crimes with guns, um, but they're very isolated. They're not organized together in any way. Um, I know that I was at the game. Um, at the Martinsburg football game when there was a shooting near the facility that um, affected um, some fans in the stands. And uh, I thought talk- I was actually talking to the chief yesterday. Um, and, you know, it, that was a very isolated incident that um, was a result of um, burglary. And, um, and they have people in custody and – and they, as far as they're concerned, the case is solved. So I'm not sure that a safety is concerned with that. Um, it's a shame that it happened for everybody involved because, um, as you know very well, I go to all the fo- Barnesburg football games, and it's a shame that you're, uh, you have to think about that kind of thing at a high school football game. Um, but I will say that I believe that the police department um, – administration Martinsburg administration did an unbelievable job um, the gentleman who got hit in the stands was within 30 feet of where I was there was no panic they were professional I, I can't applaud them enough it, m- m- most of the stands didn't know what was going that had no idea what was going on and you know at first you're like well you want to know but then as time set in, no, that's the right move, because that's a lot of people. You didn't, they didn't know exactly what was going on. Um, you didn't want those people outside of the gates. It's easier to control them inside the gates. Um, and but they did unbelievably good job on that. So, what was the initiating transaction that happened on the street? The the people who were shooting at each other. What was what was going on down there? Um, it was a result of a burglary on a, in a house, um, home invasion, and uh, that's all that. I was very clear with the chief. I knew when I was coming on the radio, I wanted to talk to him for a second about mm-hmm. it. I was very, 
I wanted him to be very clear with me what I that's about as all I can say. Okay. Obviously, it's an ongoing investigation. Um, but it definitely wasn't random. Um, it's, it wasn't an intention. Two people shooting at each other and one bullet went wild. Yes. Okay. And the two, At least one. The, 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 okay. the two people involved in the shooting, you can't answer this, you can't answer it. I get it. Was it, I broke into your house and now I'm shooting at the guy breaking in, the guy breaking in and shooting at the guy that owns the house or is renting the house? That is my understanding. That's, okay, that's the understanding. So we didn't know that much when we had the chief on before. He said he was close uh, to something breaking in the case. The person is in custody. Was there more than one person? There's people, yes, there's people in custody. Okay. Uh, is one of the people in custody the person who was in the home that was shooting I, back? I honestly do not know. Okay. Why is it? Why is there such a lockdown on information? Do we know? I, I think we have somebody in the room that can probably answer those questions better. It, it's just an ongoing investigation, and okay. I, you don't want to put out too much information because you don't. You want to be able to, if you had in, to ask questions, you want them not to be getting it from Jason Baker on the radio. Right. You want to be able to get good information that you can back up and and stuff. Right. Mr. Harvey, for those on the radio audience, oh, is shaking his I'm head not, yes. Yes, yes. That and plus, you know, could be potentially other reasons as well. But What right. are some of those reasons, Matt? Well, there might be an – I don't I don't know a whole lot about this incident. No, so, just in general. But just you might have an identity. You might have co-conspirators, accomplices uh, that, that you don't want to alert or – Protect be, the witnesses. Protect the witnesses, absolutely, yeah. Does the city of Martinsburg have a prosecutor or is that the uh, Berkeley County? They have a city prosecutor. Do they? Yes. Prosecutors. There might be more than one. Who is the city prosecutor? Ken. Yeah. Ken, I, I don't know. Ken Sayre. Oh, Ken Sayre. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. sorry. But He's but, the city but, attorney. I knew that. Yeah, I don't know. They, they, but obviously Martinsburg has, well, not obviously, but Martinsburg has their own municipal court. And they have their own judge. They have right. their own prosecutor, et cetera. Mm-hmm. All right. Very good. Uh, Jason, I want to go to i'm going to say two words to you and it's kind of like i'm going to put a key in your back wind you up and let you go woodbury avenue (laughs) um obviously there's been some changing um obviously some county residents have been upset tell me about the changes um we have limited the left hand turn onto woodbury avenue um we have installed a bike lane and we have put delineators up to protect that bike lane and to um, slow the traffic onto Woodbury Avenue. Um, the first thing before we go in here, and obviously I have talked about Woodbury Avenue on this radio many times, and this shouldn't have been a surprise to anybody because we've been working on it for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a pilot program. We knew that because of the overuse of that street, city street, that we were not going to know every possible angle of what the repercussions of what we were doing but we had an engineer that engineered it we had a mission which is we're going to make this road safer as a city street we are going to slow the traffic down Um, when you when you're having tens of thousands of cars going down the busiest city owned street in all of Martinsburg. What's the car count on a daily basis there? 15 to 20,000. Woodbury Avenue? Woodbury Avenue. Wow. Put that in perspective. Go Look historically back to 81 in the early 90s. That's about the same number as 81 in the early 90s. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, so we were starting, we had people that couldn't walk it. We had, you know, but it. I'm not going to ever apologize for trying to make a city street safer. It was dangerous. Um, people were scared of it. Um, I imagine if you lived on Woodbury, it'd be very difficult to get in and out of your driveway at times. Well, there's an, there's an individual that lives um, – because Woodbury is pretty wide, um, and then it narrows down as you get towards Route 45. There's a gentleman that lives right there that um, he was trying to get out of his driveway. This was many months ago. It took him 35 minutes to safely get out of his driveway wow and i and i i can't stress this enough that is a city street 
this isn't in the problem is is it was basically a bypass between two major routes in West Virginia. Route 45 and Route 9 in this area are two of the biggest routes that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, or 11. It comes off of 9, 11. It's technically 11, sorry. Um, but you're you're connecting two major routes, and that's not what the intents of Woodbury Avenue was. Um, the state did not ever help us out with the – on your own Molar Avenue, Route 45, it makes you feel like you want to go over to – over to Woodbury um, but it's working people are using the bike lane it has definitely slowed the traffic um, we still have some people out there that are trying to bypass the different routes um, I can tell you that um, that we are determined that it's fine you might you might figure out a nice easy route to to try to get around what we're doing, but we're going to make that area, that part of town safer for our residents um, and our businesses. And um, it's working and we're going to make it even better. I tell you, I was just last week, I was driving in toward, I don't know my compass directions very well, but where the left-hand turn is, is blocked um, on nine or whatever, whatever 11, that is there. Right. Technically 11, I guess. And the automotive gymnastics that were being done by this guy who was trying to get around the blocked left-hand turn lane, essentially doing a very tight U-turn with with different... I thought, dude, you got to go maybe a quarter of a mile and just make a legal turn and you'll be... Wherever you want to go, you'll be there 15 seconds slower than you would have been otherwise. Absolutely. It's really... Well, what I've noticed, and I've sat there at Wendy's parking lot and just watched the intersection. Um... And what I've noticed is the people that are that were that are doing these silly illegal because in the city of Martinsburg it is illegal to drive through a parking lot. We have that ordinance, um, so it is a fine if you drive through a parking lot in the city of Martinsburg. Um, That's a state code as well, is it? I didn't know. State. Yeah, evading the traffic signal. Okay, um, but I'm sitting there and these people are doing all these crazy things, and I'm looking up to the traffic light at Moeller Avenue. And there might be one person in the turn lane. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's backed way up and they're making weird turns because, you know, you're trying to avoid the traffic and you're, you don't want to be in a bit. I'm like, go up to the dang freaking light <laughs> and make the freaking left. It's not the end of the world. Sorry. <laughs> well, if you've been doing that every day for the last 20 years plus, making that left, and then all of a sudden – you're like I can't make that laugh. Like it, it, it'll it'll take a little time. It, also, but the GPS in in my Jeep wants me to go down Woodbury. It does. It does not want me to go down Muller. Correct. So, yes, and we've I have asked them to figure out how we can get uh, someone, and then I was told that we might have to literally wait till the little car goes around that does yeah. the mapping. I'm like, really? You have to. We have to wait till a car. You have to wait till the Google so, car comes around. <laughs> Yeah. So if you come down 45 and you go on to Woodbury, mm-hmm. and um, will it let you turn left once you get to the end of it where the Wendy's and 7-Eleven's no, at? we did not open it up to go left. It's not, it So had, it just dumps you out which going is, north? Which is actually how it always has been. Right. Pretty much my that I can remember my entire life. We didn't change that directional pattern yet. But people were, were able to turn left even though you weren't supposed to down there previously, right? Illegally. Illegally, correct, but I mean they still had the ability. Now with this, these, um, what did you call them? Delineators. Delineators. <laughs> Delineators. <laughs> I like that term. So that you won't be able to physically do that with your vehicle now. Correct. Is that is that? Yeah. Well, I mean, and, well they are pretty flimsy. I mean, yeah, how well, determined not, do you want to be? Well, well but he, well, here, I don't have a jeep like you, John. <laughs> well, here here's the thing about I have a truck. Them. Okay, so we only had, and literally your last guest was talking about policing. You know, and, and talking about officers and stuff. We have to make our roads, we have to build them so we they don't have to be policed. If we need to shrink the lanes to slow traffic down, if we need to put obstructions up to keep people from doing illegal things so that we don't have to have an officer monitoring that all times, then that's what we ha- we need to do. We're, we're going to see a lot more of that happening, I think, across the entire state, but definitely in Martinsburg. Um, and this isn't going to be the first road that's going to get shrunk. That 
because we have some roads. Wilson is a, another street that is very wide, too wide. And when you get really wide streets, people fly down them. And um, we just need to. Is is the Rockcliffe traffic circle in the city? No. Okay. It Part of the end would technically be city, but it's really more county. And that works well. Yeah, I was just I was wondering how that works. I actually think that's that's my second favorite roundabout that I've ever that, that's in there. That, that works because some roundabouts, like Inwood, there's a lot of round roundabouts, and it, it just seems like you're going around in circles constantly, literally and figuratively. But <laughs> they, the they, one, the people one, that commute there though tell me that it's sped up their commute. And I don't do that a lot, but like the Morgantown one that's up by the airport, mm-hmm. that one really changed the traffic pattern. Ro- yeah. The Rock- Rockcliffe Drive has moved a lot of traffic through those intersections much faster than a light. And I can tell you that the city council wasn't, when we were asked what we like to go there, a lot of them didn't want to do a roundabout. I was always for a roundabout there because I think it keeps traffic moving. And, and hopefully they'll do something with the other intersection in Mola. I'm surprised they were able to fit a roundabout in there. But they did. They got it. Yeah, they can fit one at Eagle School Road. That silly little there. one huh? just is bizarre on Eagle School Road. They somehow it's, fit that one yeah, in there, right? That, hey, that Dave, one's not going to get in my rankings. No. I can tell you that. <laughs> David Anderson wants to know why no sidewalks on Woodbury. That's what the bike lane's for. There's your answer, David. So you can you can walk in a bike lane? Absolutely. It's a pedestrian path. Well, there were, and actually, thanks for the question. That's a great question sure. because – it was it, that has came up, and I, I meant to talk about it. Um, yes, a bike lane you can walk in a bike lane. Technically, they have the right of way, so you would step out, but you would do that even on like Route Nine. Um, you know, on that path, you step out of the way, the bikes come through, and they the, just the bike has a right of way over a pedestrian. You move the pedestrian would move while the bike goes through. Actually, in the in the world of um, running or anything, mm-hmm. the fastest person has the right of way. So you move out of the way for the fast person, and then you let them go, and then you step back into your lane, and you go. The law of the bigger boat. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's the normal path rules. But that's that's what it is. Because, once again, this is a pilot program. Mm -hmm. So eventually, the hope is that once we get the traffic to calm, that we might raise the bike lane, like with a concrete or some other path, you actually raise it up off of where the asphalt is, and then that would be the permanent thing. Hey, so the boy was talking a lot about this road. Um, this is interesting, I think. What is it helping the flow of traffic get, leaving the Wendy's? I can't answer that question. I don't. I don't know. I know Wendy's was. Wendy's has just did a remodel to try to refresh their building to increase their business. Mm. Um, so I don't know if it's easy. I would think it would help some. I would think so too. I think it would help some. I think um, 7 Eleven has had a lot of cut throughs. Um, oh, yeah. So I know that that's been somewhat of concern that we're hoping to fix. And like I said, once again, I, I, I don't want to keep ha- ha- pushing this down, but it is a pilot program. So we, are, we knew that there was going to be unforeseen issues. Cause we, we, it did, because to get it done, and this is the problem with government a lot of times. You try to figure out every freaking answer, and then the and then this book comes out that's this thick to try to figure out that you're going to do all these things, and it never happens because one person has an issue with this issue. Well, sometimes it's just better. Hey, we we have an issue. Let's take care of this issue. Think more common sense. And, 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 and then you'll com- get feedback once you fix something or not, and you, <laughs> then you'll figure out what the work, other way to do it is. Absolutely. I was just talking constituent yesterday um, coming that lives off of Northwestern. Um, our delineators are probably, they're probably about two foot too close to the intersection there. They need to move back. They're, they're, they, it scares her and it's, it's moving. They probably are. Okay. But if we had spent $3 million on a race, that's a little bit bigger of a deal. If it was a, it was a concrete curb. Mm-hmm. So I actually think that this was a good program and way to not waste a bunch of money trying to, well, it wouldn't have happened. Hey, Labor Day is coming, gone, and uh, Lambert Park uh, was open the entire time. Absolutely. Would you call it a successful summer for Lambert? I think it was a great summer. 
Are you expecting that to be the norm going forward now, or will there be other issues that still have to be addressed there? I uh, think that we will be open for next year and uh, at Lambert, and uh, I think that everybody that matters is, is determined that that pool would stay open until long-term solutions to um, another pool or another facility, but leaving Lambert open as long as it possibly can be left open. Is there anything on the repair or fix or improve list there that has to take place between now and next summer? Nothing that um, has came to the city council that I know of. and no, Nothing that it, it, that it looks like it's going to be other than normal maintenance. Very good. stuff. John, did I interrupt a question from you a moment ago? Well, I did on, on traffic, as a relative newcomer, if you're taking suggestions, the lane change slalom on King Street between Queen and Winchester Avenue, some signage or something as you have to go, you know. So you don't have to make a left at the 7-Eleven? Well, you have to. Further down. What feels like you're going to go straight, you actually have to go to the right-hand lane, and then you have to go to the left-hand lane to go. It just, it nothing feels right. Just some signage there that would tell you what what's coming would be be really nice. How else are you going to see the city for the first time well, <laughs> if you don't take a couple of turns you didn't intend on taking? Well, that's true. That's true. At least you don't have the haunt the, the horn honkers. I, I know. I know one thing. When apple harvest was out last weekend, oh. The, man, you don't you don't realize how much that impacted the entire city. Not just that little bit of area; it was everywhere. It backed up traffic everywhere. I understand there's a uh, hundred seventy, hundred eighty new residents in the apartments right off King. There now is uh, is that what you're hearing? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, are, wow. are, are you seeing any impact beginning to kind of creep into the city from that? I have not noticed. I know that the um, the garage is very happy um, <laughs> that they're going to get some new residents mm -hmm. um, or n residents to possibly come in there. And I know there's some, I know that there's some targeting marketing um, that is going to affect, I think, to help that get uh, better and ran. I know. Uh, um, so hopefully. cool looking new martini bar going in the young yeah. American, I think it's called great where, sign. Anyway, yes. where is it going? Queen street. Okay. All right. Where where at on Queen Street? Uh, kind of across from City Hall. Yeah, one block up. Yeah. So down from um, Bricks. And okay. Speaking of which, have you guys moved back downtown yet? We have not. We uh, we will be closed um, October tenth through the eighteenth to move, and we will be reopened in the old City Hall, um, refreshed City Hall, um, October twenty first. Anything that residents need between the 10th and the 18th, can they access it in any On, way or manner? Online. And, and right. then, and of course, all the um, – there will still be people for manning phones and anything, emergencies like that. But um, bill payment and all that will just be – everything will be kind of suspended for the week. You have a minute left. Is there anything residents need to know, anything opening up in the near future? Um, opening up. Well, you talked about the new – new bar downtown um and uh you know support our local businesses like i said the garage there's been some changing um businesses changing which is it's expected in a place like the garage um or in, in general i mean 60 percent of all restaurants fail in the first year 80 percent in the, in the in five years so please support your local businesses and uh and uh help us out tough racket it is. You got to be persistent. Hey, thanks, Jason. Appreciate Thank you. you coming in. Always good to visit with you, Jason Baker, City Councilman, at uh, nine thirty this segment.